Hi, I'm Matthew Atkinson, and you're watching WZRA Television. You know him as Nick Fadden from Jane by Design. We're glad to have with us Matthew Atkinson. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Very good. Glad to be <laughs> chatting with you today. So tell us, episode 8 of Jane by Design is coming up. Yep. Tell us, what can we expect? Um, episode 8, yeah, it was really fun to shoot. Episode 8 is going to be great because um, me and uh, Nick Rue, Billy, get to spend a ton of time together. Jane goes off to kind of do something with her job, and uh, and we end up kind of having this whole uh, uh, night together, me and Billy, which we never had before, which will be, uh, it'll be fun to watch, because we don't really have any scenes together, and when we do, we have a lot of fun, but um, <clears throat> we haven't been able to really play off each other, and so this episode, you get to see that, and you get to see my car. Oh, very nice. Can't wait for that. Yeah, there's a lot of um, debate whether everybody wants Shane with Jeremy, with you, or yeah. Nick Rue, so it's kind of like, who is she going to end up with? So it's it's interesting. The show, we love it. Yeah, well, yeah, no, I mean, it's, and it's kind of, it's kind of how it's been promoted in a way. Um, I, you know, I think that, uh, that Jane's character could go with, with any of the three guys and, and be happy. You know, Billy's always been her best friend, so I would see her, him as being kind of a brother to her mm -hmm. than a relationship. But, you know, sometimes the person you don't realize you should be with, you should be with. And then, you know, there's Nick Fadden, which I think that they complement each other really well by, you know, being almost complete opposites on the social spectrum. And, um, but uh, for uh, just some reason, Nick and Jane just have this chemistry. Yeah, exactly. It's so much fun to play with, yeah. It's like such a fan favorite show, though. Like, you watch it and you look forward to it every week. It's like, it's addictive. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad, yeah. That's a good thing. So now tell us, when you see yourself on TV, do you kind of critique yourself at all? or? When yes. I don't like watching myself. It's got, it gets easier every time, but it's still really hard. Um, I always think that, I mean, at every performance, I, I try not to watch it too much but um, and try and leave it you know, on set. And that's really where it needs to stay because once you start watching yourself too many times, you're going to start critiquing everything that you started critiquing when you were... 11 years old about yourself I mean f from your voice to your looks and that's not what it's about you know you're playing a different character and you're playing um, uh, the truth of what you've created exactly. and so you know I think watching that gets you out of your head um, and isn't exactly a good thing sometimes but I love watching the show mm -hmm. and I think it's one of those performances that I've, I've been lucky enough that I can watch it and kind of go I almost feel like I'm not watching me. I'm watching someone else, mm -hmm. you know, so. And do you relate to Nick Fadden at all? He's like a baseball jock type of guy. I mean, any similar similarities? Yeah, I mean, in the way that we, I played baseball for a ton of years. I played a ton of sports, um, but I was also, I was like a skateboarder. And, you know, I, I, I played guitar and I wanted to be in a band. And um, so I think that, you know, growing up, I, I was almost... I probably would feel more like Billy's character really? in real life when I was growing up and in high school, um, even though I did play sports, because I wasn't really, like, I wasn't part of the popular crowd. Um, you know, I wasn't um, some major outcast, but I wasn't a, a popular guy, so. Um, but I do relate to him in some ways, and that he, I mean, Nick, besides being, you know, uh, a star jock, he's also, he's an honest, genuine person. Mm -hmm. He's not like, you know, a jock who's pretending to be nice. He's, you know, he's actually genuinely a, a, a nice guy, um, which is kind of cool. Yeah, and there's only two episodes or three left totally. Like one more, episode eight, and then two more left. So I'm kind of trying to figure out how they're going to go about it. It's like, what can we expect? It's like, you know what I mean? And then if there's going to be a season two. Well, um... Well, that's that's all up in the air, you know. I mean, that's that's in ABC Family's hands, and um, if they think the show is you should go into a season two, then it will. Um, and uh, I think it's a really good show. You know, I think it, it would be worth it. But of course, I mean, there's a lot more logistical things that come into it that um, you know might make me go, well, that's stupid. But you know, they have reasons for it. Um, but uh, what was the other question? 
Oh, what we can expect, like, kind of coming up a little bit, being there's only two episodes left. The show's kind of led us a little bit with you and Jane. Now, you're kind of like, Jane, I noticed in the preview, she said that um, you don't know where you two are standing, whether you're going to become into a relationship, kind of. Yeah. So it's like, that's... that's it's, it's an interesting last three episodes. Um, and I can say... Again, I know you can't say much. You can't give away, so kind of... Um, but me and, I mean, yeah, me and Jane have gotten to a place where we're pretty much getting into really dating each other and, and getting into a relationship. Um, and, uh, yeah, in these, in these last couple episodes, but you do get to see um, that Nick Fadden has flaws. He's not the perfect guy. Um, it, but he's not a bad guy. He's just, you know, you, you start seeing more flaws. And I think that happens with all the characters on the show, you know. Um, so as the show goes on, you start seeing, oh, these guys aren't, ex you know, they're more human. They're more like us. Um, whereas in the first couple episodes, I mean, my guy was, a, from what the perspective of the audience was a very, you know, uh, he's like, oh, he's the perfect star jock that, you know, never does any wrong. And, and that's not true, you know. Exactly. Who would you like to see guest star on the show, if anybody? Who would I like to see guest star on the show? Uh, you could have, like, anybody on there. Um, you know it would be really cool? No. I would love to, like, do somehow, I don't know, that would never happen, but do, like, an acoustic set with Dave Grohl. Okay. okay from the Foo Fighters. That would be awesome. Uh -huh. I don't, that would never <laughs> happen. Again, but, you have to see anybody. So <gasps> it doesn't yeah. yeah, no, but that would be really cool. That um, be. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's what's keeping rock alive right now. I think you know there's a lot of rock bands, but I mean, did you watch the Grammys? It's pretty much they were they're the only mainstream, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, and I love rock music, so you know he's kind of keeping it alive for all of us, you know, garage bands. Mm -hmm. Very true. And then tell us, do you have any behind the scenes secrets? Like anything a Jan Jane fan would like to know? Anything while fil filming? Um. Hmm. Well, I mean, there's tons of things that, that I I won't say. <laughs> and there's some things, I mean, the, the, there's, I mean, a lot of these people that you watch on TV aren't, aren't the characters that they play, and they're so complete opposite. I mean, especially when you come down to, like, uh, India and Megan. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, like, the sweetest people in real life, and they on the show, they're complete. Um, but, I, you know, I, I think that, you you get to learn more about us as as actors and people as our careers go along, um, and uh, and you get to see uh, totally different characters. And I can't wait to see. Um, I hope that we get more episodes on this show. I hope that it goes a long time. And I think it's a great show and a great cast and a great writers, great producers and everything. Um, but if not, I know that this cast is going to go a long way. Um, there's a lot of talent on that set, yeah. and so I can't wait to see. Um, you know. Uh, these actors being able to actually breach out and play all different kinds of roles. Um, so I don't know where I went with that. Uh -huh. It started somewhere and it ended somewhere. <laughs> it's okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. So what would you like to see happen if a season two were to come up? What would you like to see happen with Nick Fadden? It can be like totally out there, just anything. What would you like to see happen? You know, I, I mean, I, I would like, I would like to um, explore and, and see more of a, uh, um, there, Nick Fadden, as a character that I've built, is is has a lot of flaws, mm -hmm. and I mean not not just flaws as in like you know I mean he's he's still a genuinely nice guy and he's still the same guy but he, you know he has a lot that the audience doesn't know about and only gets little glimpses into you know like the pressure from his parents and um, you know how he grew up and and you know where he's got to go in life to feel you know almost even appreciated and. So there's a lot that you haven't learned about him that I feel like, you know, could be explored, yeah. you know, beyond just, uh, you know, playing baseball and, and showing more baseball scenes. I mean, like actually getting into the depth of who Nick Fadden is. So uh, there's a lot to explore. And that's not just with my character, that's with all of them. All of them. I feel yeah. like the season just like went by so quickly, though. It's like, how did it, all those episodes? I guess it's so addictive you don't realize time's going by. No, I don't know. It's it's a really good show, though. I mean, if people haven't watched, I definitely recommend it. Like, from a viewer, yeah, do it. <laughs> from a viewer's perspective, I really enjoy the show. I do. Well, 
Thank you so much. Do. Yeah, I'm glad that you do. I'm glad that we could entertain you every Tuesday night at 9, 8 Central. Because we talked to you before the show even started, and it was kind of rough to see, like, what can we expect? You know what I mean? I didn't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. And it kind of was what I expected, I guess, overall after seeing it, and even better. Sure. Even better. Yeah. So yeah. I'll give it that. I think, honestly, every episode is almost better than the last. Yes. In what I'm seeing, you know, it, I feel like that, <clears throat> and that's what happens with a lot of series. Um, you kind of learn more about these characters and things as, as they're going along, and you actually get more in depth with stories, and they're more fun to play. Um, so, because of that, I think that, uh, yeah, I think that uh, up until, you know, like even uh, next episode and then the next two, you're going to, I mean, you kind of see there's going to be a, a little bit of a, um, you're gonna want more. I think I'm after. thinking. You're, I'm thinking they're gonna leave us hanging. Why do I think every like show does that or like something like that? But that's part of it. Leaving hopefully for season two. That's what we want. That's what we want. Yes, we may or may not leave you hanging, but we do want you to want us to have a season two. Got that? That's it. So watch the show. Yes. Do it. <laughs> so, um. What else? Absolutely. And then tell us, uh, since the show's based on fashion, where do you like to shop? What's your style? Describe to us your sporting here hat. I got, and I do uh, got the hat on. I'm, I'm being, uh, you know, very, very, uh, I don't know, fashion-y with my hat. I like, I don't know. I, I, I've i kind of gotten into these kind of hats and stuff, but um, I don't know. I, you know, I, I typically when I grew up, it was... I went through phases, but, um, I mean, now it's more, you know, a t-shirt and jeans suffices unless, you know, I want, you know, want to go out and dress nice. And then, you know, I could do anything from, you know, some cool shirt and pants with some, you know, like, you know, cool whatever, or like a tuxedo, mm -hmm. you know, I like, I like to go all over the spectrum and just visit different facets of, what fashion is, I guess, but I mean, for the most part, I'd kind of just kick it in jeans and a t-shirt or khakis and a t-shirt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, about fashion, it's being comfortable, most importantly. Yeah, you gotta, uh, I mean, that's kind of the, I think the best key about fashion is you have to be comfortable because when you're comfortable, you're more confident. Mm -hmm. And that's what, you know, fashion's about. It's, it, I mean, there's exploring different areas. I don't really know much about fashion. <laughs> You know, I wish I knew more. I, mean, I have a lot of friends that, like, oh, want to be, you know, they want to be designers and stuff, and that's great, and I understand that. It's almost an art form. Um, I just don't quite understand it. Just like they might not understand why I love acting so much right. and being different people and whatever. So. Exactly. Each to its own. <laughs> and then lately, because of the show, you've been getting a lot of more fans on Twitter. You have to fill us in on yeah. Twitter now. Tell yeah. us about that. How do you like using it? Um... Okay, so uh, Twitter fans, yes. um, you know I love I love Twitter. Uh, it's it's such a g goofy, weird sort of concept, but it's 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 like it's it reaches out to so many people. Um, you know, our my fans especially are great, and I try and get on there as much as I can to. Um, to respond to them or send them messages and thank them for watching the show and, and kind of, re, uh, you know, have conversations with them if I can. Um, <clears throat> to some of them out there, I apologize. If I have never responded to you or retweeted you, it's not because I don't like you. It's because sometimes I just don't have the time to get on Twitter. And sometimes you don't message at the right time, but sometimes you do. And when you do, I'll respond. And I try to do that. So, um, you know, because so, you get one message and it's like, oh, you're so awesome for responding all to your fans. And the next message is like, you've never messaged me. Why? And I'm, I'm like, I, I, I wish I could just, you know, just send everyone messages. But, I mean, I think it's such a cool um, way to explore promotion and keeping in contact with fans. And then I like your uh, Twitter biography. It says, uh, actor, musician, Jedi. <laughs> yeah. Very neat. Yeah, well, you know, I was I was <laughs> I was a huge Star Wars geek back in the day, and uh, and uh, that started me and my my best friend Josh. Um, I'd say close friend. I have tons of close friends, but um, uh, he's one of my closest buddies that I've known since I was you know a kid. And uh, and we would I mean we'd run around with lightsabers and stuff. You know, we wanted to be Jedi's, and uh, 
and we're both fans of Indiana Jones too, and and uh, other kind of stuff. But yeah, yeah, that I am a Jedi. That's something to know about me. I am a Jedi. Interesting, interesting. And then um, I'm going to ask you your favorite tweet, but first off, I know mine of yours, okay. which is the other day you tweeted uh, Fresh Prince Alfonso, meaning uh -huh. him. I think that is the neatest thing ever. And the first thing I would have asked him is, can you do the Carlton dance? You know, I you know? <laughs> I'm like, he probably gets that a thousand times, though. So I don't know if he would have done that, you know. Yeah, no, he probably gets that a thousand times a day. <laughs> um, but, you know, what's funny is is that um, I... I I was I was hanging out with some friends when I was when I met him and uh, one of my closest friends friends basically went straight up to him and did the Carlton way, dance. No yeah, and uh, I think that probably happens about ten to twenty times a day. But um, no, that was awesome meeting him because I I grew up on that show Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I thought that was you know I used to sit there every night after dinner and and watch it so it was really cool to to be able to meet him and he's such a talented actor beyond just seeing him on the show i mean he's been in tons of plays and theater and stuff so um it, it's cool to be able to to meet someone that you you know respect especially in the field that you're in so yeah that's so neat yeah that was one of my favorite tweets so tell us one of yours do you have one either yours or someone that's tweeted to you something uh, or anything yeah um I would say that most of my favorite tweets I probably shouldn't say um, that are usually tweeted from from uh, more well-known people than me um, that I just think are hilarious. I mean, Dane Cook gets on there and probably put, spits out you know eight jokes a day that are kind of funny. You know how he works his, his tweets, but I mean that's that's there's Seth MacFarlane gets on there. He's the creator of Family Guy. <laughs> He, he has some funny stuff. I mean, there's just uh, everyone. And uh, Paolo Coelho is one of my favorite writers, and he, he, get, he actually has a Twitter. And uh, he puts very inspirational things. So there's all different kinds of, you know, what could be my favorite tweet, and it has to be a genre of tweet and what kind of tweeting that we're talking about. Okay, because I was going to say, so you like more on the funny tweets or, like, stuff like that? or? Well, I've always, I think I've grown up with uh, using comedy. I love comedy and things that make me laugh so um yeah i guess that i would say that a funny tweet is the best kind of tweet exactly exactly but like we said to a lot of people we're so addicted to twitter you can stay on there for hours just refresh and refresh and it just like it can go on for like hours on you know well so. I, I see i don't do that otherwise then i would i would feel bad and really get stuck having to respond to tons of people exactly it could go on all day. Um, it is really cool that, you know, like a year and a half ago, I could get on my Twitter, which, you know, I had a Twitter, and I didn't even know why I had a Twitter. I was just like, everyone's getting Twitters. Why not? And so, uh, you know, I'd get on there. If I got an at, it was like, it was always from someone I knew really well, and then it was just like, I was like, seriously, I got a tweet from somebody. Like, seriously? Somebody's using Twitter besides me? This is exciting. Yeah, it's not just famous people. And then, you know, and then now it's like I can refresh the page, and it's like 122 new tweets. And I'm like... How do you get, it's like, you know, do you remember Bruce Almighty when he has to respond oh, yeah, as yeah. God to all of those emails? That's, That's a email. lot of emails. Like, yeah. Uh -huh. But, um, no, it's cool. So yeah. But we wonder what are they going to come up with next, you know, like once Twitter, but it's been going on for a long time, but Oof. like. <laughs> You've seen the, off, uh, the Office where BJ Novak, he creates a thing called Wolf. And no, it just, I haven't seen that, no, no. And it just brings together all of the social networks, okay. Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, faxing, telephone. So if you send a wolf, it sends us to everything. Interesting. I don't know. Yeah, but like, think about MySpace. You know, now that's kind of like dwindled down. It's gone. It's, it's so just gone. for music now. I think. I mean, that, that actually, you can explore new bands on MySpace. That's what's cool about it. You can still use it, but as like a social networking site, mm -hmm. it's it's just it's tanked. And what's funny is, is that probably is what made Dane Cook's career was MySpace. Mm -hmm. You know, he was one of the first viral marketing sort of comedians, and I think that really propelled him to a different kind of status because he could connect with all of his fans that way. Um, and that's what Twitter's kind of doing now and, and Facebook in a way. So, you know, uh, you never know what's going to be next. I don't know. Exactly. Something crazy, something that's going to make someone a lot of money. Yeah. Oh yeah, the creator of Facebook, even the creator of MySpace, I'm sure, is is just sitting back counting the ones. 
Yeah. So, and then tell us about your music now. Like, you also write your own music, let's or not talk about my. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, let's no, let's. That's fine. It's, uh, you know, I, I've 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 I I like to write, but I throw most of the stuff I do in the trash, and then I have to start over. That's. This could I be I some of the be best pieces there. You could take it and mold it into something that it's. I'll, I'll make sure to go through my trash can and make a song for you, but um. You know, I you know it's it's I like to write and I love to play and I love to you know uh, create and uh, I was talking about my buddy Josh earlier and he's in a band. She came from above and they're a really good band and um, I'm hoping to collaborate with him and possibly you know sit down maybe later this year and record uh, if not a demo an album. Um, but you know if that's not official and it's not something that. I'm not like, planning to do or start a career in music. I just, you know, I just want to create. And so, you know, um, I might sit down, write a couple songs, put them on as a demo, and you'll hear them, and you'll be like, I don't really like that, and that's fine. But I created it, and I felt, and if I'm proud of it, then I'll put it out there. And what type of music? Rock. rock. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I want to create a rock album. I think based on the premise of that there's not very much rock out there and that's what I grew up on and I and I love that kind of music. So, um yeah. I mean, it'd be probably rock. There'd probably be some acoustic thrown in there, maybe, I don't know. Um it just I mean, I love all different kinds of music and all different kinds of bands. Um so I guess if I'm pulling from my, you know, influences, then there's it's going to be all different kinds of songs on there, but um mostly in a rock fashion, I would guess. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, what music do you like listening to? You said you mentioned the Foo Fighters and then Uh yeah, uh I grew up on the Foo Fighters, The Offspring. Um I love One Republic. I knew them before they, you know, even had an album out and uh I was like, man, these guys need to be famous. Yeah, they're good. They're really good. Um and then uh let's well, I mean I just tons of I mean I grew up on by Blink One Eighty Two and I grew up on all different kinds of bands and then obscure indie bands you wouldn't know and then, you know, bands that most people don't know, like at the drive in or or the Mars Volta or uh Every Time I Die or um it's just all different kinds of bands from hard rock to metal to I don't know, popish kind of rock. I don't know what you would call One Republic now. That they've kind of collaborated. I mean, they were kind of like a more of a piano sort of ballad band, but now now they're sort of uh, they collaborate with like Timberland and stuff and make really poppy songs, but they're still really good. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. And then when you write your own music, what kind of inspires you? Anything in particular? Or just yeah. I mean, everything that I write has uh, something I would guess that is important to me in life at that time. Um, and that could be about anything, you know, I could see a story on the news that inspires me to write a song or, you know, uh, you know, you got tons of songs to start this way, but you know, if an end of a relationship comes, you know, that, that really inspires, it's, it's things that bring emotion to you. It doesn't matter what it is. And so, you know, it's, it's about, um, expressing yourself through music and hoping that, that by doing that other people can enjoy it and, uh, maybe help them because I mean music's helped me through pretty much every bad thing that's you know I've ever gone through so um yeah exactly and then uh you mentioned your friend is on The Voice yes would you ever consider doing something like that going on The Voice or American Idol or was that would that ever I can't I can't sing I I mean I like I I sing as in I try to sing and I and I'm on key if I can be I mean I'm not uh, you're talking about Chris Mann which you should go watch the voice because he's on the voice he's on Christina Aguilera's team now but um he's an amazing singer I mean he he's I mean he can he's not only can he do um any pop kind of sing I mean you could stick any song in front of him and he will sing it better than probably anyone who's on the radio right now I mean um I'm nowhere no I don't I'm not even in the same caliber of you know like that I shouldn't even be mentioned in the same no seriously because I mean he's a true singer and a, and a real um uh songwriter and a really good one talent like that's nice you know I mean, yeah I mean you can go on I mean you saw his audition um on the voice I mean it was it was it was like opera I mean it was and it was amazing and that's what he's kind of trained to do and he uh he's kind of gone on and, and created some music that's more mainstream you would say, and he's really good at it, but um, 
I think he's, uh, he wants to try and find a happy medium between those, um, you know, and doing what he loves to do, but also, you know, creating something that a lot of people love listening to. Um, I bang on a guitar and scream and hope that it sounds good. I mean, <laughs> for the most part, that's basically what I do. So, yeah, no, we're, we're uh, complete separate. Well, we want to hear some of your music, so hopefully you release something soon. Well, you know, if me and Josh will collaborate and see if, if something comes, you'll be one of the first, and I'll probably post it on Twitter if I put anything up. Um, yeah, and that, and also, uh, you know, I'm hoping to do some uh, indie films and shorts and things like that, um, start a little production company for doing that kind of stuff yeah um so there's all kinds of stuff that i'm hopefully getting in the works of doing nice looking forward to it and then tell us a little bit what's a day like for you in the life of matt atkinson what goes on on a day-to-day basis life okay uh um i don't sleep so there's no reason to talk about waking up i'm usually just drinking coffee and tea throughout the day and uh, uh it depends on the day i mean the other day i went in and i I uh, I got to read with a couple of uh, cast members on a certain show because they're you know thinking about bringing me on for like a little guest part, um, and uh, I got to you know meet some talented actors that day, and then you know I go on to do another audition with um, a casting director I never met before, and then I go on to meet a producer and and do an audition with a producer, and then I'll go have uh, coffee with a friend and uh, catch up and plan a photo shoot or, or whatever or, or plan maybe shooting something um whatever it may be um uh, just you know keeping in touch with everyone it's tough to do when you work a lot and you're always moving um and then yeah hang out with my friends and sit down and play some guitar and um you know hit the gym or go for a run um stay in shape i don't know i do tons of things all the time I don't have any, that, that's one thing, I don't have like any specific day. It changes. It changes every day. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, some days it might be, you know, I'll just kick it with some friends and, and uh, you know, watch a movie or just hang out at a, at a, uh, at a bar or whatever, or, um, you know, grab some nachos and just watch a, a football game or whatever, and then the next day I might be out and about all day, you know, doing work, mm-hmm. you know, so it's, um, it's always changing, which is fun. Yeah. Well, you don't want the same day, day-to-day routine anyways, you know, it's fun. Not at all. That's, that gets boring. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, tell us something we may not know about you. Something interesting. Anything? Ooh, I'm not good at these questions. Uh, something you may not know about me. Um, I don't really... I, I like being awkward and making really goofy noises and faces. Okay. So there's one. Uh, in high school, I like. I mean, I would I would run into walls and fall down if it would make a girl laugh. You're kidding. Um, I always was trying to make people laugh, um, which is funny because like I started out doing plays that were really comedic, mm-hmm. and then I you know I learned to start loving the craft of acting and creating real characters. Um, but you know I still love doing just goofy stuff. It's just it's I, I typically don't get cast for that kind of stuff. And I kind of wish I did. Like, I love every time I get to work with uh, David Rogers on our show, um, who plays Ben, uh, Jane's brother. He's hilarious, and he's got this amazing comedic timing. Every time I, I have a scene with him, I'm able to actually kind of, it feels like I'm almost back in the theater again. Even though, you know, I'm kind of playing the straight face that, like, I don't, why are you acting so stupid? It's just awesome to be able to to be a part of that. I think it's it's fun, and it, when you're able to make people laugh, you make their day better. So. Oh, I agree. I don't know where I started and ended with that. You said things that I, yeah, okay, things that people don't know about me. Uh-huh. Well, we know Goofy faces. That and, That's interesting. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> on my resume, I have a, I have a little, you have like a special skills section. I never know what to do with that. It's like, oh, I played baseball and whatever. Um, and uh, so I put, I put, I have, uh, I can make a pterodactyl noise. Because a lot of people said pterodactyl noise is what that sounds like. I don't know if I can do it right now because I have like kind of a <clears throat> throat thing. You have to do it, do it. Hold on. Um, let's, some water. let's see this special skill of yours. <laughs> There's a face that goes along with it. Okay. It's kind of like, okay. Yeah. Pterodactyl? 
<laughs> yes. Okay. Exactly. Honky. That's what a lot of people say. It's like a pterodactyl or like, I don't know, an, maybe not an alien from the movie Alien, but some kind of alien jumping around. <laughs> That's interesting. See, I couldn't put that on mine because I can't do that. You have that talent. You can do that. Oh, yeah. It's, it, it's gotten me far in life, <laughs> that talent. Yeah, in the beginning of an audition, I can do this. Can uh -huh. you do this? No. No. I've done that a couple of times. Sometimes I actually bring it up. I, you know, I think I started with it as maybe like a little sales tactic. Now I'm just hoping people make me do it. Really, honestly. Exactly. Yeah. Tell us something. Um, your favorite fast food restaurant. Are you kind of like health conscious or? You know. <clears throat> okay. I kind of am in a way because I was a personal trainer for a while and I like to keep healthy. Okay. But I love fast food. Um, Who doesn't? Yeah. Yes. Well, of I mean, course. It's just, yeah. And so, uh, but I, I kind of grew up when, like, me and my buddies were skateboarding. We would walk to the Taco Bell down the street, and I love Taco Bell. Like, you can just get so much food for so little money, and it all tastes fantastic. Uh, so I would, I'm probably Taco Bell. Um, now I've gotten into In and Out Burger, but of course that's here on the West Coast. We didn't have that back home, um, but uh, they're good burgers. Very so yeah, burgers. yeah, and that's all. That's all natural-ish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if it's all organic, but I know it's all brought in fresh meat. Yeah, better than the rest. I mean. Yeah, better than yeah. Like I don't know, McDonald's patties are like forty percent not anything that anyone has ever heard of. Yeah, forty percent of what? Yeah, anyway? exactly. Yeah, and then the rest, the the rest, the rest is you know over processed beef i don't really know i just know that every time that i eat at mcdonald's which last time was i don't know probably over a year ago i feel sick i just hate it afterwards i just feel like ugh, for the next five hours taco bell never did that to me though it should but it doesn't so i'm gonna keep eating it until i can't anymore <laughs> how about we ask everybody chick-fil-a are you a fan of chick-fil-a oh god oh yeah i love chick-fil-a Oh, yeah. I mean, we would have uh, Chick-fil-A would deliver little chicken sandwiches, breakfast sandwiches at our school, at our high school. And, you know, you went in and you bought it. It's like, I don't know. I remember it was like two bucks or something. Those things are amazing. Oh, my gosh. It's so good. I love Chick-fil-A. And they opened one in Hollywood for you guys. So. Oh, I know. That was one thing. I mean, like, my brother, a huge fan of Chick-fil-A, um, was, was really bummed about coming to California was, you know, oh, I'm not going to be able to get my chicken sandwich, <laughs> get my Chick-fil-A on. But now he can. And then is there anything else you want to tell your fans out there? Um, uh, thank every single one of you for uh, supporting me and my career and supporting the show um, and all of your kind thoughts and, and uh, prayers and everything. And uh, thanks for watching and keep watching. And, uh, you know, if, if Jane by Design ends, it's not all over. We're all going to keep going. Well it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. But I really think that we should get picked up for more episodes. Yeah. You should call ABC Family right now. Yeah. And just tell them. And yeah, come on. Exactly. Let's do it. We have power in our hands. Let's do it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then also make sure to follow you on Twitter. And yeah. At J Matt Atkinson. Someone stole every Twitter name that I ever wanted. So I had to use my first initial. What does J stand for? Can we ask you that? John. Yeah, my first name's John. I get that a lot on Twitter. Maybe they'll know now. Uh, yeah, John's my first name. I've always gone by my middle name since I was born, so it's my brother. Um, yeah. Interesting, because now, because you are John, but everyone calls you Matthew. It kind of gets confusing, but I picture you as a Matthew, if that makes sense. I mean, because everyone calls you that. Yeah, and I love the name Matthew, and I, I, I'm, I'm glad I stuck with Matthew or Matt. And, uh, yeah, that's what my parents wanted to call me by, so... Um, it's just, you know, I, I don't think that it's really anything unusual. Everyone's always like, why don't you go by your real name? I'm like, that is my real name. Yeah, it just happens to be my middle name and not my first name. It does help with like, uh, like telemarketers and, uh, telemarketers, uh like, you know, it, like it's, it's six o'clock and I'm eating dinner and they call and they say, Hey, is John there? No, he's not. Uh, like, very smart. Wasn't fun in class though. Cause in class, the teacher would be like John Atkinson and I'd have to tell him it was by Matthew and then they're like okay I'll write it down and they forget and so you have to do that like nine times but interesting that could have been something we didn't know about you there you go that's <laughs> something you don't know about exactly his name's John that's it that's it
So yeah, everyone make sure to follow him on Twitter and then his website as well. And yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and we got I got fans that are making websites now. There's Matthew Dash Atkinson dot com and that's a fan page, um, and it's very sweet. I think it's got every screen capture that had me ever on anything in it. Uh, it's it's very sweet. Um, but yeah, Matthew Atkinson dot net is my official site. And then at J Matt Atkinson is my Twitter. And then on Facebook, you just search Matthew Atkinson. Or you can go to Jane by Design's official page, and they have me liked in the left hand side. Awesome. So thank you again so much. All right. Thank you.